need to read from the fourth verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Now it came to pass, as he was preaching in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on, the, on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a man asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father who is in heaven, who will give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise My hope is built on nothing than Jesus Lord righteousness I cannot lose of the days we thank you this morning has it not been you who won't be here we are here because of you we are here because you woke us up this morning and you brought us to your sanctuary Lord we ask this morning that as you have brought us you will not allow us to go empty handed let the light of your word shatter every dark part of our lives. Amen. Illuminate us by your word. Amen. Let there be healing by your word. Amen. Let there be miracles this morning by your word. Amen. Let there be deliverance this morning by your word. Amen. In Jesus' gracious name, we we'll pray. Amen. And the saints say, 
Let's be seated this morning as we welcome our neighbor to our right and to our left and say good morning and welcome to church. This morning, as I, while I stood here, I, my mind just went back to what we used to sing in those days in primary school during break time. Some have food, but cannot eat. Some can eat, but have no food. We have food. Glory. Does that song make any meaning to you? It never made meaning to me until some few years ago. I think I've even had my last child. I was joking with it. I, I was joking with it using one of the dial, uh, one of the tongues in Nigeria. Some of can. No, I was I was just joking with it, and it dawned on me that come. Do you understand what you are saying? And this one I want to say to you: Some have eyes. But cannot see, can see, see no more. Do you understand? Some could see, but see no more. Has God been faithful to you? Some have legs and can walk before, but they still have legs. They are paralyzed. This morning, with a heart of gratitude, just lift up your right hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Quickly, we'll go to what we have this morning. The promised satisfaction. All good things. The promised satisfaction. A satisfaction that is promised to you You know, one of the things Jesus did is the mission statement of Jesus, the first preaching, public sermon was, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Greek word there, metano, does not mean have a U-turn. It means change your thinking. Why? The kingdom. What was the kingdom of God to a Jew? It has been promised to them. The Messiah which has been their expectation, which has been the promise of God to them, is at hand. At hand is a 16th century English, which simply means, is with you. In those days, if they're having a feast and then, in the, in, in the palace of the king, and then you hear, when the guest gets to the door, Sir Edward is here, and Lady Diana is at hand. I mean, Lady Diana came with his husband. And so Jesus was saying to them, change that thinking. Why? The promise that will be made to you is already with you. So why should I change my thinking? I cannot be a partaker of those promises if I still think the same old way. For as a man thinketh in his heart, we attract what we believe. What we believe, we become. A promised satisfaction. Why do I, what am I saying this? You need to know there are things that have been promised you by God. And you also need to know that there, there are positions to take for those promises to become a reality. The promised satisfaction. All good things. All good things. When we say, let's, let's see Malachi chapter 3 before I commence. Malachi chapter 3 verse 12. He said, and all nations, that was where we took our Old Testament from, shall call you what? <laughs> Let's say it again. And all nations shall call me blessed. Come on, pacify it. You want to go? Say that all nations shall call you blessed. You know what I mean? People will see you and say, God is good. All nations shall call you blessed. No when they say good things, something good is something useful, something healthy, something generally accepted to be right. All good things. Now, let it be clear to us that God wants us to live a fulfilled life. 
Let it be clear to everyone this morning that God's will is for you to prosper. Let it be clear to everyone this morning that it's God's will that you live a healthy life. Let it be clear to everyone this morning that it's God's will for you to live a satisfied life. The question is, how do you know? Third John 2 says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul does what? Prosper. In, let, let, media, please help us with Deuteronomy chapter 8. Very fast. Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning from verse 7. Very fast. I want us to establish that fact that it's God's will that I be blessed. It is God's will that my life profess the blessings of God. Uh, all right. He said, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a what? <laughs> Look at what he was saying to them when he was taking them to the promised land. Into a good land. A land books of what? Of fountain and death that spring out of what? Valleys and hills. Which, which water is purer than the water that comes out from the rock? This is how God is good. Let's continue, please. We are taking it to verse 10. Verse 8. A land of wheat and barley and wines and, and pomegranate, a land of oil, oil, olive, and honey. The next verse. A land wherein, all right, okay, one, let's read it together. Let's go. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without what? Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody get excited this morning that. God has a good plan for you. Let's continue. He said, thou shalt not lack anything in it. Somebody said, nothing broken, nothing missing. A land whose stones are what? <laughs> and out of whose hills thou mayest dig what? Let's continue. Eating, uh, uh, take, it, take it calmly, take it calmly. When what? And at what? Then thou shalt. <laughs> ah, when thou art eating and at food. No, it is not God's plan for you to go to bed empty stomach. Not because you are dieting, but because there's nothing. You know, you can decide not to, once it's six o'clock, I won't eat again. And so anything that happens and you, you couldn't eat and it's clock six, it is till tomorrow morning. But this one, if you see it by 12 midnight, you will eat. But it didn't come. Plan for you. But, why, but that is surely the experience of people. Let's proceed. In Isaiah chapter 51, verse 2, he said, Look unto Abraham, thy father. And Sarah, thy mother. For, he said, for I have what? Blessed him. Abraham is a definition of God's blessing. In scriptures, when you want to study some things, there are individuals that are personified. Abraham, when it comes to blessing, is an authority to study. When it comes to prayer, you study Elijah. You want to study favor, sit down with the book of Esther. And you know what it means for a slave to become a queen? In the land of slavery, and citizens are bowing to the queen and saying, Long live the queen, your majesty, to a slave. It's favor. But when it comes to blessing, he said, Look at Abraham. I, I called him alone and blessed him. He said, I called him alone and what? And blessed him. So when you look at Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, he said, In blessing, I will what? I will bless thee. When he offered Isaac, I, I feel within me that God went through the entire universe looking for who was greater than him to swear by. Because for you to swear, you need to swear by one higher than you. And when he could not find one, he came back to Abraham. I said, Abraham, I don't know if you remember when you were small, when you want to swear, what do you do? You put hand on the sand. You put it in your, on your tongue. Through to God, if I no kill you today. So God looked at Abraham and said, Ah, true to myself. In blessing, I will bless you. So I swear by myself. In blessing, I will bless you. And according to Galatians chapter 3, 
Cursed is he that hangs upon the cross, that the blessings of Abraham might become ours. So by redemption, <laughs> you've been brought in to that covenant of the blessings of Abraham. So it is God's will for you to experience the good things that Abraham has been. And not talking about that same Abraham, the Bible says, and he became rich in what? In cattle, in oxen, in nasics, in silver, in gold. In fact, when he got to Isaac, he said, and he waxed very great. That is your father. He said, look to him, that begat thee. He said, look, look, look that direction. See the one decorated him. That is my will for you. All good things. All good things. But the question is, what is his blessing? Because, you know, one of the biggest problems of young people today is that we feel that what makes a big man a big man is the car he rides, the houses he lives in, the wrist, the rollest wrist wash in, in his hands. So we, we do everything just to buy those kind of cars, live in that kind of estate, you know, live in that kind of a house, uh, and then wear the kind of watch they wear, wear the kind of shoes they wear, which has made us become a consumer generation. And you know the truth? The producers determine the direction of the world. The consumers keep the producers succeeding. When Jesus said, <laughs> no, they used to make this statement. They say, and the poor keeps getting poorer and the rich keep getting richer. It is scriptural now. Jesus said, the one that, has, that does not have, he no get to. The one he has, I'm at Galore. They will collect it from him. And then they will give him to the one that what? That has already. Because the consumer will always give to the producer. So why would the rich not keep getting richer? The mindset is that these are the things. It is a consumer's mindset. What is blessing? Let me begin by saying what blessing is not. Blessing is not money. You know, when somebody gets a car now, they say, oh, God, don't bless you. You don't get more to God, don't bless you. No, 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 no. It's a deceit. It is the blessing that produced the car. The car is not the blessing. You say, what do I mean? The blessings of God does what? Makes, make, old King James said, make it rich. The new King James said, makes one rich. He didn't say that the blessings of God is riches. The blessings makes you rich. It is what you do with the blessing that will determine if you have the good things of life or not. You can be blessed and die the poorest man on the surface of the earth. Was Lazarus a child of God? In the parable Jesus told, Lazarus went to heaven. Was Lazarus a child of God? As a child of God, was Lazarus blessed? He was blessed. But was very, very, very poor. The description does not permit to put the remaining O-R. But he went to what? Abraham also went to where? So I discovered that it is not the money that determines who goes to heaven. Abraham went to heaven a rich man. Lazarus went to heaven a poor man. So decide that you want to go your own. Am I communicating at all? And so, what is blessing if it is not riches? One, blessing is the covenant. What is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement between two people. Most of the time, sealed with blood. Now, <laughs> it is the covenant. He said to Abraham, see, it, it is between me and you. And when Abraham doubted him, he said, Abraham, listen, let me speak in your language. Since I've been promising you and you don't get it, let me speak your language. Abraham, bring me a Haifa. Bring me a this, bring me a that. Mark, go and read that scripture. God did not tell Abraham what to do with those things. But because in his days, Abraham understood what they do with those things. He, he understood that these are for covenant. So Abraham slashed them into two and opened them up, apart from the box. And now what happened? Now, 
in his days when a king or a, a, a nation, two kings are trying to enter into covenant, or a king had defeated another king and he wants to enter a covenant with him. Now, they, 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 they tear those animals, they divide it into two. Then the, the lesser king walks through that sacrifice, saying to the greater king, may I, be, may, 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 may I be torn to pieces like this if I don't keep to this covenant? But guess what? Between God and Abraham, who was lesser? But we walked through the sacrifice. What was God saying? Abraham understood it. God was saying to Abraham, Abraham, may, it, may I become like these animals if I don't keep them? So from that point, Abraham staggered not at the promise. He understood what they did. Come into a, come into a covenant with God. Come being in a covenant with God is being in partnership with God. You should come to a point in your life that you say, Lord, I will constantly do this for you, that you might do this for me. Each time you fulfill your part, you are reenacting that same covenant. That is one of the things that tight also does. That each time you bring it, he say, honor me with it. You are reenacting the covenant you have with him. How have you been managing your covenant with him? Some people say, they have not promised to give anything, but they say, Lord, I will do this for you. And it will be like the man that was in the aircraft. And they pick him, pick him, they're so troubled. And they announce that one engine has gone. And he said, God, if you save me from this, I will do this for you. I will do that for you. I will build a cathedral. The plane landed safely. Guess what he brought for Thanksgiving? Standing fan. The man who said, I will build a cathedral. Now, he does not understand. He doesn't need a plane to die. You just need an uncapi. What that? To just... And then they won't even, he won't even know what happened. Until the doctor told him it has eaten deep into you. Am I communicating? The covenant is God offering you himself. And if God be for you, who can be what? Against you. So the first thing that the blessing is, is that God offers you himself. Covenant. Number two, I'm going to be first one time. Wisdom. Idea rules the world. The covenant comes as wisdom. The blessing comes as ideas, inspiration. May I ask you, if you call your child or a relative or a friend in America now, I said, please, I, I'm in need of a million naira. Can you, can you help me out? I'll sort you back later. And he said, okay, I will do that. What will the person send to you? Naira or dollars? Well, you, you say naira. Do they spend naira in America? So what will they send to you? Then what do you do when you get it? You exchange it, have you? The question is, do they spend money, naira and dollars in heaven? So each time you come to God, what does he give you? He gives you what they spend there, the intangible, the idea, the wisdom. When you put it to work, it will produce the good things of life you are looking for. The wisdom that will help you eat right. So that when you are confessing health, you are not destroying your health by the way you eat. Am I communicating? The wisdom that lets you know that you must sit up or you phase out. Wisdom number three. Relationship. Don't trivialize relationships. If you doubt me, go and ask Lot. When Lot was with Abraham, everything went what? Went well. Relationship. You, we all need people in our lives. If you're an Esther, you need a Mordecai. If you're an Abraham, you need a Melchizedek. If you're a Lot, you need an Abraham. Relationship, treasure relationships. These are the things God gives us to open doors for us. The next thing I would like to point out there is talent. Talent is a part of God invested in you. It's a divine deposit. You didn't buy it from anywhere. It's a divine deposit. Your talent, if on to a marketing level, will bring the good things of life to you. The last thing I will tell you about, 
that is a blessing is called favor. Favor covers your errors and projects your strength. When you meet a man who is favored, he doesn't struggle. Not that he doesn't work, but doors open on their own accord. It's something you must crave for. When favor comes, connection comes. When favor comes, help comes. When favor comes, difficult situations dissolve like an ice before a fire. Am I communicating at all? Now, if these things are the, the blessings, how can these blessings turn to good things? In the parable of the mustard seed in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32, it said a man who has what? One, the mustard seed. What did he do? He took it. Number three, number two, he did what? He sold it. And then the team produced. You must, you must discover the blessing you carry. He sold it. He went to work with it. Remember the man who went to hid his talent? God called him a wicked man. Anything you need to succeed in life is already around. It's not far from you. What you are looking for in Sokoto is in your Shokoto. Get this clear. Prosperity does not come from abroad. Prosperity comes from what? Above. Not from abroad. Above. There's something in you. When he wanted to produce wine, he didn't ask them to come and bring what was not available. There was pot and there was water. He said, fill the pot with water. There's always something within you and around you. He said to that woman that, whom's, okay, remember those, that's what I was saying. You can be blessed and die poor. The prophet died a debtor. And yet he was a prophet, a man of God. And yet he died what? A debtor. He owned so much debt that the only thing they could, he has that they could take was his children. But the prophet Elisha asked, what do you have at home? He said, a little oil. She didn't understand that that is all God needs to make her what she needs to be in life. Don't look down. Don't trivialize anything. Is it your ability for details is important. For figures is important. It can take you beyond your widest dream. So own it, sow it, tend it, trim it, Work on it, it will produce. Child of God, but I will say to you, as I round off, even as you desire the good things of life from God, you know the Bible says, where we read in the gospel, it says, ask, and you shall what? Seek. You will do what? Knock, and you shall what? But why have we been asking and not been seen? Is God a liar? In the book of Numbers, when they went to spy the land, in Numbers 14, 10 men came back and said, the land is exactly as God has said it. In fact, in our, in our, own, in our own calculation, it's even more than what God said. By our own observation, I mean. He said, but the giants are there and we are like grasshoppers. And he didn't say that they said we are grasshoppers. They said they were like grasshoppers in their own eyes. You want the good things of life? Watch your words. God said to Moses, he said in verse 28 of that Numbers 14, as they have said to my hearing, that shall I do what? Do unto them. Why am I saying this? Watch your words. Your words governs your life. What happens to people and not necessarily what God wants to, ha wants to happen to them, what happens to people are what they say. Be careful with you. your words, what are your seeds? Stop speaking negative. This my sickness. Are you the inventor of the sickness? This my challenge. And when did it become a personal property? The power of life and tongue are where? Sorry, the power of death and life is where? This morning. Permit me for two minutes. Rise to your feet. Forgive me.
And let's practicalize that scripture. Bless yourself. In less than two minutes, speak over your life. Speak over your children. Speak over your business. He said, whatever you say to my hearing, that shall I do. Can you put it to practice this morning? Can you put it to practice this morning? The power of life and death is in the tongue. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. For surely, as you have said to his hearing, it will do to you. Amen. The things of, of the good things of life, your desire, it will come to you. Amen. The favor of God will rest upon you, rest upon the works of your hands, rest upon your children, rest upon your family. In the name of Jesus, Amen. it is God's will that you have a good marriage. Every trouble home here, we speak peace into that home. We speak peace into that trouble marriage. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we declare over that business, prosper. Amen. Prosper. Amen. Beyond your imagination, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your place of work, enjoy favor. Amen. Enjoy lifting. Amen. Enjoy promotion. Amen. That will cause men to come and ask you, what is your secret? In the name of Jesus. Amen. The wisdom to prefer solutions that will marvel the board be released upon you in the name of Jesus. The solution that will move you from just being a staff to becoming a shareholder, the Lord put and released upon you. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. As we continue the service, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and